G'day guys, what's cracking? It's Ralph here. Again today I'm taking the Nikon Z9 out with a 70 to 200. I realise that's probably why you're tuned in. You're like, huh? To shoot some eagles. Now, a bit of backstory. We've come down from Queensland to Victoria and I couldn't bring a lot of gear with me because it was just a family trip. So I had to leave my 150 to 600 behind, which means my biggest zoom lens is this. But this is 45 megapixels, which means I can actually shoot at about 400 with this if I crop down to about 24 megapixels, give or take. So that's what we're going for today. And there's no sunrise. The sun comes up there. But what happened about two hours ago is a possum, the size of me jumped on the roof and ran along and woke me up. I'm like, I know the sunrise is going to be rubbish this morning, but I couldn't sleep. So I thought, I know what I'll do. I'll get out into nature, ruin my brand new shoes. I go find some eagles. And there's one. Hang on. Oh, it's very exciting. Did you see it? They feed about every 20 minutes. And this is a massive swampland filled with mice and snakes. And so they kind of hover around and dive down. There's two of them. I think they're hooked up. Not sure, but I think they are. Um, and they're playing around a little bit. But they're also dive bombing and smashing these animals and then taking them up. And so we've got some beautiful foreground with these, these beautiful reeds or wheat or I don't know what they are. Grasses that obviously bokeh when you're shooting this far away. I'm cranked at 200 because this is the most this lens will shoot. And my current settings, and the settings have changed as the sun's come up and as the different birds have come. So there's some things called woolly wagtails and some beautiful rosellas around. So I've been shooting some of them as well. Those, the rosellas were asleep, so didn't need a very fast shutter speed for them. The woolly wagtails are on speed, so you just gotta crank right up the shutter speed. But this is really low light, right? I know it looks fine for you, but it actually is quite low light. And so my current settings on the Z9 are one two thousandths of a second. I'm shooting at 2.8 because it's so far away. Whatever I get in focus, the whole thing's going to be in focus. Um, I've got the auto tracking on. So with this, there's a um, on AFC, so continual focus mode. Um, on 3D, which means um, if anything uh, resembling a 3D shape comes into your field of view and you focus, it picks that up. And that's what's happening really well. I've also got it on animal auto and car detect in case a car comes flying across the horizon and I've got to take a photo of that. Um, and I'm using back button focus. So the back button focus really quickly zooms it in. And so what I do is as I see a bird, my first instinct is to hit the focus button, which turns the camera on. Because I reckon the camera, maybe every 20 or 30 seconds, and you can put this in the comments below if you know, um, puts it on a standby mode. And standby mode's not real great. I wish you could just expand or despand the, uh, had some control over the standby mode. Maybe you do. Maybe I just haven't found out how to do it yet. So have a look at these images. These were taken really early when it was really quite dark. And obviously you're balancing noise with focus with exposure on those wings. And they're pretty much black silhouettes. I've done a little bit in post, but they're pretty much black silhouettes. I've then waited around 20 minutes and we had another go. This is what that looked like. But now, right now, we're getting into primo territory. Now, just, just so you know, like, we're honest in this channel. Like, I hate it when people pretend something they're not. I haven't walked a great deal of distance this morning. That right there, that's, that's my resort. So maybe seven minutes door to door and I walk through a plover's nest. Plovers are crazy and I probably need to go and apologize to all the people living in that vicinity. I didn't walk through the nest, like I didn't destroy children, baby children, like bird children, plover children. I didn't touch them or destruct at all, but then plovers are crazy. And they're quite aggressive and angry, so Everybody living in that vicinity at around five o'clock would hate me if they knew it was me. And if you're watching the video and you know that was me, thank you for watching. So as the lights come up, those, um, those eagles, the, you can see the detail in their wings and the beauty in their wings now. And the, look at this shot. I just love it. It's kind of into a spiral dive bomb. And I've caught it just, just above the beautiful grass that with a smooth, soft, mushy, beautiful grass. And here's another one. Yeah. Oh, and they're back. They're back.
They're behind the tree. So I'm shooting at 20 frames a second. That's what that is going off at. And the tracking is amazing until they dip where the grass is. And then obviously the tracking can lose it. They swift and move and twist and turn. And as they do that, you just, you can lose it and pick up the grass instead. And there was this epic shot before. I should have just banged on a manual. Should have banged on a manual. To, um, to shoot it through the tree so I was still in focus and then it went behind the tree so I didn't refocus and I should have just put it just use the setting on your lens and back into my, my manual um, but here's a couple of those shots I'm not a birder or a bird photographer, but I do love eagles. I think osprey must be my favorite raptor. But you know, put talons and a beak and a predator focus on wings? Come on! So, what I've chosen to do with these is I'm spot metering, so when I'm in focus, uh, I know how far over or underexposed I am, and that's important because I want to be overexposed. I want to be overexposed because I'm shooting with the light in the background, which can make it a silhouette, and so I want to overexpose so I can see the detail of the wings and the bird and the face and the features as they're looking at me, which means I need a higher ISO, but I also know that there's less noise in overexposed images but it's a balancing act like with everything it's a balancing act and it all depends on those circumstances but these particular circumstances i'm shooting with a higher iso than i actually would to expose normally because i need to underexpose the belly and the underside of those birds to make them look banging the deceptive thing is the light actually comes really bright really quickly and you don't realize it so you can actually overexpose if you're not careful so you need to realize that even though to your naked eye globe it doesn't look like it's much brighter than it was say 10 or 20 minutes ago it actually is increasing at quite a rapid rate it'll come to a point when that change will slow right down but from from sort of dusk to now which has been like half an hour it's boosh, goes real super white super quick super light and now what will happen is that change will slow down but it will continue to increase and that what, what that means is you can continue to lower your ISO providing your shooting on an accurate speed so I chose my speed based on um, you want to shoot more than double your most telephoto focal length so this is a 200 so i want to shoot more than 400 i know to shoot birds i've got to shoot at least a thousand if i was shooting on my six fit by 150 to 600 i'd probably shoot at 3200 but i don't need to shoot that fast on this lens which is fantastic so i can lower my speed which means i can then also lower my iso and i can get less noisy images did you get all that if you don't didn't or you're like huh just put a comment down below Let's have a chat. I'm learning too. I realize for these kinds of videos, what would be the best preferred solution is either to me have a second tripod that you could see what's happening on my screen as I turn it on. Um, so that's what's happening on my screen. But I need a monitor. If I put a monitor on here, I could record everything that's happening to there. So if you work for a monitor company or you know someone that works for a monitor company and you'd like to send me a recordable monitor that I could review and then use to really make these videos more helpful for everyone, then contact me, link in the description. All right, so something epic just happened. In Australia, we have these things called blue fairy wrens. They're little wrens with blue stripes, like bright, vibrant blue stripes. And I just pick one up in the grass and oh my gosh, I'm, I'm, I've just fulfilled my application to National Geographic, folks. Come on, have a look at these. That is the beauty. When you come out and you stand in one place for a couple of hours, things start to shift and happen. 
and if you've enjoyed this content please subscribe um, I'd just love to hang out with you really just be part of the channel I love being able to do these videos and know that as I talk to a camera there's heaps of real people behind that are really interested and fascinated in what we're doing and how we can learn and inspire each other together so I'm very thankful for you if you'd like to subscribe or even join the channel you can do so down below have a look down below it looks a bit a uh, bit groovy these days yes yeah, so you're welcome I wasn't even gonna vlog this morning I, I brought my stuff out just in case but I thought I'd just take some shots and then it was just too alluring there was too many options with the Eagles I'm like I've got to bring you guys along I know you love it I know you love it so I hope you've loved it thumbs up please and I will see you in the next video um, I'm not actually applying for National Geographic it's just a joke it's just it'd be fun it'd be hard work and it wouldn't work for my life but it's a funny line